<laughs> Must have put a few off yesterday. <laughs> Scared them away. Let's go use that. Today I'm probably going to put even more off. Because <laughs> now we're starting to get down to the business end of the mediumship and healing sessions, right? So, uh, so now we're starting to get down to whether somebody's doing their homework or not. <laughs> um, one thing I would like to do firstly today, so this is, this is session four of the mediumship and healing sessions. And uh, hopefully all of you have a handout, do you? Yep. Okay. What I wanted to do firstly uh, is talk a little about spirit interactions today because um, many people still have a lot of misunderstandings about spirit interactions and what's going on even with their own mediumship. So I wanted to just describe a lot of things to you. Firstly, remember that everything is based upon, here's our soul, remember everything is based upon our soul condition and our soul condition involves our emotions. emotions Passions, desires, <laughs> intentions, right, and so forth, right? <coughs> now, the mo where the majority of people are going wrong with mediumship still on the planet today is that they are thinking that they can say words to spirits and actually get a spirit to come of any, from anywhere at any time without considering their own emotional condition without considering their soul condition. So uh, I'll just give an example of this. Um, there's an example that I, I noticed on the net uh, a few days ago, which I'd like to just mention. This is a man who disagrees very much with what I'm teaching, and this is what he has to say. Um, One is to exercise my right of divine decree to clear from my space of influence any and all spirits or energies that resonate below the seventh dimension or sphere. Right? So what he feels is that he can actually clear away from his space of influence all spirits that resonate below the seventh sphere. But he believes he can do it with, his, with a statement. And this is a statement. In the name of God, the Great Spirit, and all that is light, where it is in divine order, I ask for the highest light to assist me to channel the clearest possible message of divine truth, where this is in accordance with the highest source of all creation and the divine plan for, all, for Earth. Whew, it's a long uh, thing to say, isn't it? <laughs> now, that might sound good, right? And usually, it, you know, it, it is basically setting up a ritual in order to clear away spirits around you. Does that make sense? But it doesn't address a number of issues. Firstly, it doesn't address why there are spirits around you in lower conditions in the first place. Does it? Right? Why, if I have to clear away spirits, then those spirits must be around, in, around me a lot of the time. And if they're around me a lot of the time, why are they around me? there must be something we're at risk, and it's the law of attraction. But there's got to be some reason why they're around me and I'm not addressing that by just making that statement. The other thing is, he says, in the name of God, the Great Spirit, and all that is light, where it is in divine order, I ask for the highest light to assist me. And therein lies the issue. Is asking for something to occur in this manner actually in harmony with God's laws on the matter? Well, what laws are actually operating upon the soul? Well, firstly, we pointed out there's this law of attraction. Now, one of the exercises over the past few months has been looking at your law of attraction and examining what's going on in your life and clearing away something from your law of attraction and see how that law of attraction changes with spirits around you. Does that make sense? So that was one of the exercises. The other thing that we talked about was our soul condition is, is governing the law of attraction. So that was another exercise we did, remember? Looking at soul condition. How, what is the real condition of our soul? What's really going on inside of us? Now many of us, when we start on the divine path, start realizing that our soul or our emotions and our passions and our desires or longings are not as pure as we would have hoped they might have been. 
right? Many of us have gone through that realisation, right? Now, of course, it's these impure passions and longings and desires that actually attract other spirits around us who are also impure. And so it's our soul condition that affects it. Now, what is the biggest thing that affects our soul condition? It's the reception of divine love, isn't it? That's the biggest thing that transforms the soul. So, so how do I deal with this um, receiving divine love? Well, I've got to actually work through my emotions. I've got to feel the truth of those emotions. I've got to release them. And once I release the error, remember the soul is the container of either we have error-based emotions, passions, desires and so forth, or we have truth-based. And remember yesterday I said that they both cannot exist in the same container, on the same issue at the same time. So I can't, on one hand, have a pure desire and intention for something. I can think I have, but I can't have it unless it's really there inside of me. It's really going on inside of me. Now, the problem is, from almost every single person on earth, we falsify our own condition to the people that we relate to. Like, how many times in a single week would you have not told the truth to your husband, wife, child, parent, people at work, people, you know, if you're going to school, people at school? See, a lot of times what we do is we falsify the truth in order to get an emotion. Remember yesterday I talked about those addictive emotions that we're constantly trying to get satisfied from outside of ourselves. And so what's happening then is I'm in a state almost constantly, and most, most of the planet's like this, in a state almost constantly where I am actually living in my errors and not living in truth. I am actually compromising the truth in my life. It is rare to find a person on the planet who is not compromising any truth in their life. That every single thing they talk about, every single thing they think, every single action they take is all in harmony with truth within themselves for a start. And then it is extra rare not to, to see someone who's actually in harmony with God's truth on the matter. All right? Now, remember these are the three things we've covered in the first three lessons in the first three lessons along with what we'll revise in a minute which was the doubt and fear stuff now many of you still think that those lessons weren't very important right? and many of you who are trying to develop your mediumship have almost ignored those lessons in all in your day-to-day -day life and I know because I observe you doing it does that make sense now you can do that. You're allowed to do that. Right? But you will not benefit from these sessions if you do that. So it's pretty pointless coming along to a session like this if you're not going to do the homework and then not going to put it into practice. In fact, um, in the first century I said a few things. One thing is, I, and you would have maybe heard this illustration. I said that a person who listens to the truth and does it is like a person that builds a house on a rock. And when a storm comes and the wind blows and the rain comes, the house still stands after the storm. But if a person hears the words of truth but doesn't do it, they become like a person who builds a house on the sand. And when the wind comes and the rain blows and all the water washes the house away. And this is what our mediumship is like, even. If we don't build it on solid foundations, what will happen is sooner or later there will be problems with it, problems with our mediumship. We'll be attracting spirits of all kinds of uh, conditions to us, unaware, we'll be totally unaware of that ourselves, and we'll finish up finding ourselves in really deep problems because these spirits can heavily influence us if we allow them to, if our soul condition allows them to. Many of you are still doing this, thinking that if you receive some metaphysical or physical information about people around you, that it means you have a better connection now. And it doesn't, because to be frank with you, a first fear spirit in the hells can give you metaphysical or physical information about another person. So. 
what's the point in talking to a person who's actually in a lower condition than yourself in the spirit world unless you're helping that person not getting help from them does, does everyone follow me with that now any spirit who focuses on the metaphysical or the physical is going to not be in as good a condition as any spirit who focuses on higher truths with regards to God's laws and God's love. Now, there are many spirits in the spirit world who know that people on earth want to connect to spirits in the spirit world and they want to connect to spirits who are in good condition. And these spirits in the spirit world think, all I have to do is imitate a person in good condition. Right? Make out I'm someone that I'm not, and this person's not going to be able to tell the difference. And then I can influence them in all sorts of ways. Now, I know a, a young man who's very influenced uh, with spirits. He's, he's got a very good mediumship uh, ability, very influenced with spirits, but in a sexual way. So what happens is, he thinks he's really developed spiritually because he knows all these things about everyone around him, but he especially knows all these things about the feelings of different people, and in particular for him, women, whom he can have a sexual, relation, or a sexual relationship with in a very short term. And so what these spirits are doing is bringing him one after the other after the other of these women. Now he views that as a good thing. But actually, his soul condition is degrading and degrading and degrading even further through this interaction with spirits. He actually feels God has given him this gift. Right? And the truth is, God gave him the gift of mediumship, but how he's using it is totally out of harmony with love. Right? So, you can see that if we have the law of attraction working, and we have the soul condition stuff working, and we're focusing on divine love, we are going to actually make soul changes inside of us, right? Our soul is going to transform. When our soul transforms, the law of attraction governs what spirits will surround me. And if my soul is in a higher state of love, then the spirits who are in a lower state of love will not be attracted to me. Now, let's say I have dealt with a lot of things in my emotions, but I haven't yet dealt with fear. Who's going to be attracted to me then? Well, it will be a group of spirits who want to manipulate my fear. That's who's going to be attracted to me. Let's say I have dealt with a lot of my emotions, but I haven't yet dealt with my anger issues with women. Who's going to be attracted to me? There'll be a group of spirits, probably male, if I'm a male, spirits who are angry with women, who will connect with me but still because I haven't dealt with that emotion. Does that make sense to everyone? Now, if we, have, if we know that, then we're already in a better position than if we don't know it. Right? But knowing it and actually feeling it are two different things. Knowing it and actually releasing the emotion are two different things. So some of you at times have discussions with me and we say and we talk about something and I know that you've not heard a single word I've said to you about the discussion. Quite a few yesterday had some discussions with Mary that you heard nothing from her about. Right? And the reason why is because we have different emotions inside of us right, that cause us to not listen to certain types of people. So let's say um, for many of us, one of the major problems on the earth today is that we only listen to people who are older than us because we think older is wiser. right? And so when a little child comes along and reflects something at us, and often a little child is even more mediumistic than anybody else, often we don't listen to that child because it's younger than us. So we don't take any notice of it. And yet that child just taught us some truth, or had the, we had the opportunity to learn some truth from that child that we've just dismissed. And this is the danger you have with your mediumship, is that if you develop mediumship and healing, you need to develop it with a solid foundation. Now, when we listen to these sessions but don't do anything, so some of you have come to every single session and yet have not done any of the exercises related to the session. 
Now, I'm not saying those ones of you who wanted to come just to observe. So I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the ones who are coming purposefully for the point of dealing with their mediumship skills and growing their mediumship skills. The question has to be asked, what's the point in coming to a session when you're not going to actually do the homework from the session? And, and to be frank with you, you're not valuing my time, which I'm giving you for free by doing that. Does that make sense? Like, is it loving for me to continue giving you my time for free when you go away and don't even bother doing anything with your time and then come back the next, for the next session thinking that I need to teach you more truth? How can I teach more truth to somebody who hasn't yet even tried the truth they've already been taught? Can you see that it's a progressive thing? So my suggestion is, instead of doing that, Start asking yourself why it is you don't want to do it. Because remember at the start I said, the people who are invited to this session are the people who either want to develop their mediumship or their healing, or they want to observe how it's done. Right? The other people who are invited. Now, if you're getting the information and you are a medium, but you're not actually using it to develop your, your mediumship, then do you really want the information? Wouldn't we better be better off with a little small group of 10 people here information than 100 people here who flirt with the information? Can you see that? For many of us, we'd be better off dealing with different emotions rather than being here. So I'm, I'm, I'm asking you to reconsider why you're coming to these sessions with mediumship and healing. Now for some people it's the first time you come and it's great. So I'm not talking about that, I'm talking about the ones who are regularly coming along to the sessions, which are given for free and there's a problem with free, you know? And you know what that is? We often devalue what's free. Right? And that's a huge problem because divine love is free, you see? And often what we do is, because it's free, we devalue it. We think that it's of no worth. But it's of the highest worth to your soul. And so we need to get out of this mind, mental concept that what's free isn't worth anything. And this is why in New Age concepts you hear quite often people saying, unless there's a money transaction, don't do it. Why do they say that? Because they think of the money as an energy transaction, a commitment from the other person. Well, what I'm saying is, I don't want commitment based around money. I want commitment to yourself and to your own mediumship based around your desire. And that's what I'm asking you to develop. Does that make sense? So I'm not doing this for money. <laughs> if I was doing this for money, I'd be charging what it's worth and none of you could probably pay for it, <laughs> right? What I'm doing this is because I love you and I love the fact you want to develop your mediumship. Do you love yourself and love the gift you have? That's the question you need to ask yourself. Does that make sense? So, what I would like to do is actually talk firstly this t today a, a bit about the spirit interaction that's going on for many. What's happening is because the errors, there's quite a number of errors in the, in the soul of different, of different ones of us, right? And my mic's having a problem today. It had a problem last time we did the spirit mediumship session, eh? interestingly enough. Um, here's the souls, if you like, of the spirits that are around us, right? So we've got spirits who are around us. Now, it's our soul condition, remember, that attracts these spirits around us. Now, there are spirits around us who you would call your guide. Most of you have never, even most of you who are mediums or healers have never actually met your guide yet. Because many of your guides are so well developed in the spirit world that they have to go through a number of different channels to actually talk with you. Does that make sense to everyone? And so what happens is we have this other group of spirits surrounding us. Well, you know, so we've got one spirit here, two. And some of them will be males, and some of them will be female. And then, of course, if we're connecting to the, even the higher spirits, which are in the 22nd sphere of the spirit world, they have no gender anymore because they're in the soul union state. Remember, the two halves of the soul are recombined in that state. 
But anyway, we have all of these spirits surrounding us. These spirits will not go away. Many of them will not go away if you ask them to. All right. Nina, um, microphone, come here, please. Before when you said there's many of us haven't met our guides because yep. of their condition as opposed to ours, is that the same for everyone or are you saying that's more specific in this group? Uh, it's, it's both, yeah. yeah. But the more you're on the divine love path, the closer you are to your guides. If, you, if your guides are on the divine love path, which they will be. So, so nearly everybody has a guide that filters through other guides to get to us. That's right. Because most of them have a lot of degree of difficulty communicating directly. Yep. James? These other spirits also... It's on, yep. Yeah, th these other spirits also have their own free will as well, too. Totally. Yeah. Every spirit has their own free will. Now, remember, the spirits in the first sphere of the spirit world are not in a very good place of love. All right? And in fact, there are, a whole, there are billions of these spirits surrounding the earth. That's why you call you know, earth-bound spirits. You've heard of that term. They are spirits who are in the first sphere of the spirit world, a lot of times in the hells of the spirit world, in very dark places of the spirit world, in the first dimension, who are in a terrible state of love. Right? Now, these spirits, there are usually a number of different categories. There's one category that want help. So there's often a group of spirits in the dark places in the spirit world and they have worked through a lot of their stuff and now they want help. They want to get out of the pain and suffering that they're in and they want some assistance to do that. Now those kind of spirits, obviously, are not going to try to influence you very much. They want your assistance. Then there's a second group of spirits who don't care about help, not help. They haven't yet, you know, they just enjoy in the spirit world, enjoying what they do normally what they were doing normally here on earth. And those groups of spirits really don't care one way or the other whether you help them or don't help them. And all they care about is living their life as they have it right now. And then there's a third group of spirits, which I would call the malevolent spirits. And the pageant messages, we refer to them as the evil ones. When we say evil ones, we're not saying that their soul is evil. What we're saying is that the emotional content of their soul is evil. In other words, they have desires, passions, emotions and intentions that are to harm another person. They desire to harm you. And there's a whole group of those spirits and many of you mediums have already met some of those, right? You've already met some of those spirits and, and conversed with them and felt quite afraid by them and, and, some, and so forth. Now, it's that third group of spirits that the majority of people are totally unaware, and I'm talking about the majority of mediums on the planet, are totally unaware of their influence over them. So the majority of mediums go something like this. Please can I have the Archangel Gabriel come? And then a spirit comes to them. And then they say, I ask in the name of God, the Great Spirit, and all that is light, for the most appropriate high vibrational being who's in complete alignment with God and the Great Spirit's divine plan for the universe and the highest good of humanity to share the message of divine truth for what is the highest good for me at this time. Who are you? And the Spirit says, I'm the Archangel Gabriel. <laughs> now, do you think an evil spirit is going to care that you actually settle that? What do you think? Do you think a murderer would care that you said all that? Because <laughs> many of these spirits are still murderers, are they not? They're still in this state where they would like to commit murder or rape or whatever who are coming to us, right? Do you think he would care? Like, you'd go, you'd go down to the local prison and sit down with one of them and say... <laughs> like, the idea, when you think about it, is quite ludicrous, right? You see, the reason why it's ludicrous is because it takes no account of our soul condition or the spirit's soul condition. Right? And remember that God doesn't change her laws just because you say some words. The only way that God's laws can be utilised is by you actually changing your soul condition. I just wanted to um, ask about 
intention and desire that comes from a soul place because it, it is true isn't it that if we we might still have a lot of emotional injuries but once we assimilate some divine truth and once we have a, an intention to have a relationship with God if we do ask with a an emotion rather than a long um, ritual mm -hmm. if we um, desire that that does have an effect doesn't it it doesn't mean we're going to get rid of all of the negative stuff that's right it does have, desire an effect. does have an effect desire and it? attention exercised positively does have an effect but it's going to be mixed with our emotional soul condition when the spirits are attracted so it's like so sure my having a desire and intent in my soul to only connect to sort of divine love spirits is certainly going to help me but if i have an emotion where i'm angry with people generally right what kind of spirit is going to be attracted to that emotion not a divine love spirit but rather a spirit not even on the natural love path but rather a spirit who's in the darkness of the hills who's going to be attracted now any spirit who's in the darkness of the hills do you think they really care whether you think they're someone else or not no. of course not if they can get what they want or harm you in the way they want they don't care as long as they get what they want right the only way for them not to be attracted to you or for you to notice them is for your development to be greater than theirs in love I mean your love development to be greater than theirs and that you can actually feel their emotions and intentions and secondly the only other way that you can assist that is by asking for your divine love spirit guys to protect you from those particular spirits but even then they can't break God's laws doing that either right so you if you have a strong feeling of anger and resentment towards say females and you're asking your divine love guys to keep you your spirit friends you know, the spirits away from you who also have the same kind of anger do you think they're going to be able to do that forever to do that continuously would actually be breaking God's laws for them they'd be breaking God's laws please and um, for Mike thanks um, AJ I've got a real fear of the malevolent spirits because I was psychically attacked about 10 years ago yep. um, on a regular basis and yep. um, it's sort of blocking my mediumship completely I just like I've got this block I won't connect with guides and spirits and um, I'm sort of want here because I want to break through that so do I need to just keep feeling the fear of um, you need to look at what is underneath the fear what's underneath the fear when you were psychically attacked what happened to your life um, I can't remember it was just when I was in bed and I felt smothered by okay. a terrible spirit okay and, and when you felt, felt smothered, terror, terror. Yeah. okay so yeah. the, the denied emotion inside of yourself that attracted that spirit was terror yeah. you were going to need to do some terror work in order to release that feeling from yourself and when that feeling is released from you if a spirit came and tried to smother you you wouldn't care about it at all you just say oh you know you can't really hurt me there's nothing you can do you want to have a chat you know I had a spirit come and do that with me I was in Barbados and in Barbados surrounding Barbados there are quite a lot of very dark spirits and I was laying down uh, in bed one afternoon I was quite tired and and all of a sudden this spirit from next door came this spirit next door they had this uh, three-story castle and in the dungeon of the castle was where they tortured a lot of black slaves to death right and this spirit was a white master who had done the torturing of these slaves and he, as I was as I was laying down and I was relaxing I was just praying to God this spirit came and just came straight over straight over me tried to overcloak me the energy coming from the spirit of course is I could feel his emotion which was one of rage and anger and resentment and he wanted to kill me really that's what he wanted and because I would by that stage released a lot of that emotion I could just say to him initially there was an initial amount of fear which was triggered and I released that and then I just said to him I just lay next to me <laughs> and I'll talk to you about the truth if you want and he actually finished up so after I reasoned with him about that and he could see that he wasn't having any effect on me I talked with him for around 15 minutes before he got sick of me and left right 
he didn't come back and he, and he probably hasn't changed very much in the spirit world from the discussion, but he, he didn't want to attack me anymore. Right? So, so with me going into the terror, what's the terror of? I mean, is it terror of that or a, a childhood? Thing? It's a childhood terror that you have uh, related to spirits in particular and related to what happened during some of your nights when you were little. And, um, and you need to allow yourself to experience yeah, I'm not of consciously aware of that. No, no, but the reason why you're not consciously aware is because right at the moment, the terror emotion itself is blocking the awareness. And the key is to allow yourself to experience the terror. Um, some people, I think Josh, you did a bit of terror work this week, didn't you? Yeah, it's a bit scary, isn't it? Like, very, very, very frightening. So the key, the key is to allow yourself to work your way through terror emotions. Terror emotions have a huge effect on psychic attacks. I'll give you an example. Um, here's another example. This one was on the net too. Um, I'll just see whether I've, I've got so many pieces of paper here. But there's that, there's that, there's that. And I haven't dropped any. Have I? Oh, here we go. Look. Some spirits don't want me to talk about this, so that's interesting. Um, one day, I met a light worker living near me who was feeling very powerful after having a few great spiritual experiences. She said she was eager to rush ahead and become a master instantly. I heard her tell the universe she wanted to experience everything. I couldn't let that go. And I suggested that perhaps it may be better not to ask to experience everything. I suggested if she really wanted that, perhaps she could ask to experience one thing at a time. But she wouldn't have it. She was flying and said it would all be wonderful. A few weeks later, a friend of hers phoned me asking if I could help her break the door down to get to her friend who had gone completely crazy. She wouldn't come out of her place. She hadn't eaten for weeks. She was saying she was living on light. She wouldn't let anyone in even her best friend, because as she shouted through the door, they were all really aliens and she wasn't going to be caught and transported. I helped her friend to get inside. It then took months of work by a lot of her lovely friends to get her sorted out and disconnected from heavy stuff and the astral plane beings that she had tapped into. Now, this person who wrote this assumed that this all occurred because she said, I want to experience everything. And it didn't actually occur because of that. What had occurred, the reason why it occurred is because the woman had a powerful experience spiritually which she then became addicted to. And in her addiction created an emo there was an emotion in her of desiring power, desiring glory inside of herself and so she opened herself up more and more to the spirits who were around her. And of course, what type of spirit was going to connect to her? A spirit who was wanting power and, and so forth, right? And that's exactly what she got, right? And she allowed that spirit to pretty much overcloak her and then do whatever he wanted. Now, if her soul condition wasn't attracted to power or glory, she would never have attracted that spirit. Right? But because she was attracted to the powerful, the feeling of feeling powerful after having the spiritual connections, she then very, very rapidly got caught away by her own emotional attractions to a spirit. Now, no amount of asking for God's protection is going to prevent that if I am addicted to power. Now, remember I've talked in the past a lot about how uh, many sort of uh, what you'd call people with I intellectual problems or people with uh, psychiatric problems like schizophrenia and manic depression and so forth have said most of them have deep spirit connections which they connect with and stay in because of feeling powerless. When they're in their spiritual state, they're in a heightened state of awareness and they feel fantastic. So particularly for a person who's manically depressed, in the state of the manic phase, they feel fantastic. And to be frank with you, when at times in your mediumship you're going to feel that. 
You're going to feel, I'm so powerful. Isn't it great? I know this about this person. I know that about this person. I know this about that person. Wow, it's really, I know when they're going to scratch their nose, you know, like it's just amazing. Who are you connecting to? You're connecting to some very low spirits, right? And they're seducing you into a state where they can use you more. That's all they're doing. Right? And, but the reason why is a high spirit wouldn't do those things. A high spirit would actually honour your free will and honour the free will of the persons around you. A high spirit would do that. But lower spirits don't care about that. Right? So, how do we address all of these issues? Well, we need to go back to the first three lessons that we've done so far. The lessons about soul condition, praying for divine love, and seeing about your law of attraction. You need to constantly improve in those areas if you really want to build your soul condition into a state where you don't attract those kind of spirits. Now, it's the soul condition that drives everything in mediumship. And most people are not aware of this. Because, see, when we have a gift of mediumship from a young age, we then think that there must be something special inside of us that causes us to have this wonderful gift. Well, yeah, there is something special inside of you that causes you to have this wonderful gift. Just like there's something special inside of the child prodigy who can do music, like from an age of five, you know? And the child artist who is at the age of nine is, do nine is doing these beautiful portraits and whatever. Every one of them has these beautiful gifts of different types. The problem with the gift of mediumship is that we have spirits telling us about other people. And, you know, if a spirit's in a state where they're telling us about other people, then it's going to be very, very difficult for us to not become addicted to the knowledge that we're receiving from them, if we have that emotional condition. So if we have an emotional condition where we're not helping the, when we don't really want to help the person, but we want to get something from the person, some emotions of glory or power or honour, then we're going to set ourselves up for the manipulation of spirits who are in poor condition. So does everyone see what I'm saying about all of that? Yeah? Okay. Now the reason why I raise that is because this lady that I just mentioned, who uh, opened herself up in that way, was addicted to the feeling of power. And because she was addicted to the feeling of power, she allowed herself to be fully open to the spirits around her who wanted to make her feel powerful, but they also wanted to make a lot of other things happen in her life too, which of course she finished up doing. For a person who's manically depressed, they are often addicted to the powerful feeling. So they, they stop taking medication that keeps them out of that powerful feeling, out of the powerless feeling. They go into a powerless feeling, they want to feel powerful. Spirits come, attach to them. And when those spirits are attached to them, they go into this manic phase. And when they're in this manic phase, what do they finish up doing? 23 hours out of 24 a day. They don't sleep. They barely eat. There was a friend of mine I knew, he was, he was nearly 70 and he was doing handstands on these fingertips, right? Which he couldn't do when he was in a normal state, by the way. And he would be handstanding on his fingertips like that, right? You try doing that, it's quite difficult. And he'd be walking on his hands like that around the house. His wife was totally freaked out about the whole thing, right? And he was 70 years of age. That's what happens when you've got some spiritists attached to you who are fully attached to you and using your body. There's another lady I know who is a friend of mine too and, uh, and she would just have sexual liaison after sexual liaison in that high state. So the spirits that are with her just wanted to have sex constantly and that's what she would do. And then she'd come out of it and feel totally ashamed and worthless and these are terrible emotions and, and she'd go into really big downers for, for a very long time and then slowly, you know, the doctors would get her back on medication and everything and she'd get back into some sort of equilibrium and then all of a sudden she'd want the powerful feeling again she'd go off the medication and away the high cycle would go again 
Don't. Can you in a microphone? Uh. AJ, how do we break the cycle? I know someone who has that challenge. Um, the only way to break the cycle is deal with the soul condition that creates it. The soul condition that creates it is the powerless emotion. And in the case of someone who wants sexual liaison after sexual liaison, there's obviously a sexually powerless emotion that needs to be dealt with. And the key is to actually go into that emotion and feel it at the causal level, which means going into what created it at the childhood level. So in the case of the example I've given, the lady was abused by um, a, 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 child, a childhood um, relative and her father never gave her any sense of approval or consideration about it, even when she, he was told that it had happened. So she spent a lot of her life trying to get daddy's approval after that. Now that was what drove her sexual liaisons. She would need to deal with that emotion. Once she dealt with that emotion, then she would stop attracting that. If we have the mic back there, Pete. <coughs> this woman, um, when she's under the influence, does really nasty, horrible things and sets people up and gives them things and then pretends she hasn't and then sues them and creates havoc. Right. Total havoc. Right. So there's some a different set of emotions for her that she'll need to address. Her emotions obviously are about um, wanting to deceive others. And then so she must have some feelings that she hasn't gotten things from people during her life and therefore wants to... So she probably gives it to them when she's in a good state and then wants to take it away from them when she's in the not so good state. So she's avoiding some very angry and resentful emotions inside of herself which cover over some deep sadness that she needs to address. Once she addresses those feelings, then when... She, she, there's also obviously a powerless feeling that would attract a spirit attached to her as well. So once she addressed those groups of feelings, the spirits will no longer attach to her. Just to give you an illustration, there was one lady that I talked to who was manically depressed. She came to me one day and she drove me to a seminar. A similar, it was in the States, it was a seminar similar to this. There were probably a couple of hundred people there. On the way to the seminar, she tried to drive me off a bridge. She got so angry with me uh -huh. after a very short conversation. <laughs> now, after she controlled herself, she, she was yelling and screaming at me the whole time, F this, F that, F you, whatever, and she was going on during that state, right? Now, once she got to the stage um, where she'd calmed down and I talked to the spirit, and then I talked to her about what attracted the spirit to her, the very next day she was in an almost total different state and what happened overnight was she cried all night about how powerless she felt. And the next day, the interesting thing was that the same day, the first day that she almost drove me off the bridge, the, there was a little boy with us, he was three years of age, and he went, he, as soon as this lady walked in the door, the little boy went around everybody who was in the room and belted them. Like, as soon as this lady walked in the door, the little boy, three years old, went around and actually belted every single person, other than the lady. Uh -huh. The next day, when she walked in the door, the little boy came and sat on her lap and didn't do anything. Uh -huh. And that's just from just one cry, even though it was overnight, of dealing with some powerless emotions. So it's possible to change these things very rapidly if you know and understand what you're doing. Now, how does this relate to our mediumship? Well, obviously a manic depressed person is very much a medium, right? Just like a schizophrenic person is very much a medium. And, and so the same principles apply to our mediumship. If we don't develop ourselves at our soul condition, then we're not going to be able to channel truths from higher sources. Even if we think we can invoke them, we are not going to invoke them because we're going to be surrounded by spirits in quite low condition. So no matter how much invocation you do, which is similar to what this man here does, he says in this suit, he says, there is a sacred power in demanding three times in the name of God, what is your name and what is your attention? Now, 
Do you think a murderer is going to think, oh, he's demanded it three times. <laughs> he, must, he must really mean it. <laughs> Do you think that is going to be the case? So why would it be the case in the spirit world? <laughs> These spirits have free will, just like you have free will and a murderer has free will. So why would it be any different? The only thing that's going to attract something different is your own soul condition. And that's why it's so important as a medium or a healer to change your soul condition. Can you see that? It's so important. By the way, there's a number in the audience who are having zone outs at the moment. Um, it's yeah, I saw you doing it. Yeah. Um, the, the reason why it's occurring is you have some spirits with you who do not want you to hear this information. Alright? So, what you need to do, and what these spirits need to do, is to actually start listening to the information. Because there is a way for these spirits to continue a connection with you in a different way. Right? They're not going to. They're afraid of losing their connection with you. Does that make sense? These spirits. And so what they do when they when I'm presenting, this is why these spirit and mediumship healing and healing sessions are very interesting at times. Uh, lots of different things happen at one of these sessions compared to the normal sessions, right? And the reason why is, and I can feel it in the audience happening. And the reason why for many of you is there is still these spirits in the lower conditions surrounding who want you to not hear the information and not apply the information. The irony is it will actually benefit these spirits as much as it will benefit you. They'll actually be happier once they start applying this information. It's just they don't believe that. And so they'll zone you out. Now, if you find yourself going into that sort of out-of-body state or that zone-out state or tuning out of the information, Straight away understand there's probably external influence, these spirits around you, who are trying to get you out of the state of hearing the information. Now when I was in Barbados it was very interesting because what's happening in Barbados at the moment, there was a whole group of spirits who were all the way through the Caribbean chain of islands. But most of the Caribbean chain of islands are all volcanic. And the only island that is not volcanic in the Caribbean, I think, is the Barbados Island. And so what happened while I was there last was this whole group of spirits came from another island, from the Bahamas. And they came to Barbados. They were in very dark condition. And the reason why they came was because they knew at some point they would have to disconnect from people in the Bahamas because the Bahamas may go underwater. And so they started trying to develop connections with other spirits on other island, uh, with other people on Earth, on other islands that would survive the coming world events, right? Now, talking to these spirits was very difficult because what they would do is they, every time you started talking to a group of spirits who were wanting assistance, these spirits would come along and, and agitate them. They would actually say, don't you listen, don't you listen to that, this is not, you know, you, be, you, you should be afraid. And they'd go into these, like, lots and lots of statements they would make to these spirits. I've actually got a recording which I think I have played on, the, yeah, the slave one. Uh, remember in the first session, I think it was? Um, I played a recording of the slave group of spirits. And remember there was this other group of spirits that the slaves were saying, no, you know, don't do that, don't listen to them, you know, he'll mislead you and all these different things, right? And that's what a groups of spirits often do to us if we're mediumistic. So when there's something they don't want to hear, what do they do? Just shut you down. Michael, when you were talking with Mary yesterday, you had a group of spirits doing that with you. Does that make sense? And you just, we weren't aware of that, but it was going on. And it's happening, right? The key is to understand that the reason why they're doing it is there's an emotion in them that causes them, that attracts to our emotion, that causes them to actually get into that state where they want to shut you down. Because if you hear this information, you might change. And if you change, then they won't have as much connection with you. 
and they want the connection. In fact, what they want to do is heighten the connection that they have with you so that they can act out the things that they need to act out with you. Now, the key for all of us when we're doing, when these things are happening to us is to actually notice, oh, I'm just zoning out here, right? So, so what inside of me is causing, is, is saying that I don't want to hear this? See, there has to be something inside of me that allows the spirit to try to influence me in a negative way. So, so what is it about the soul condition that I didn't want to hear? What was, it, what was it? When was the moment that I started tuning out? Can you trace it back? What, what was the last words you remembered? Right? And often we can't, but what we need to do is take more notice of this if we're a medium or a healer. When was the last time? Go back to that time and you'll find that there was something emotional in that. Um, if we, um, microphone, um, there's one, th thanks. Right. Sorry, I do remember I was thinking that I'm really not interested in all this mediumistic stuff I loved yesterday, but I just came along for the curiosity today. Okay, yeah. so you have a spirit who's actually detuning you from being interested in this, right? And because of that disinterest that you have, and, uh, and to be frank with you, much of your disinterest is not actually your disinterest. It's actually the spirit with you who doesn't want you to know about this stuff. Mm. And if you think about many of the metaphysical and spiritual experiences you've had through your life, you'll see that there is often, you are often in some out-of-body places. And these spirits assist you to get into that out-of-body condition. And they don't want to stop doing that with you. Right? So actually, this information would benefit you greatly, but the spirit with you doesn't want it to. Does that make sense? So to go back to that emotion and ask yourself, is it that I'm not really interested or is it that actually there might be some spirits? And my suggestion would be to go along to something like a kinesiologist who understands spirit connection. And what I would do is I'd test for a spirit connection and, t and we can ask questions and test to see whether what this spirit feels you shouldn't be doing, what they feel you should be doing, and you will often see that your life has mirrored what they think you should be doing, which is not you using your free will anymore. Does that make sense? So just be very, very aware of what's going on there. And you can be greatly assisted through understanding what's going on with these spirit connections. You are highly mediumistic and you need to understand it if you're actually going to benefit from it. Does that make sense? Actually, sorry. Yeah, you want another question? Oh, it's just, I had, a, I had an experience with a spirit when I was three years old, or uh, it was, actually it was about seven or eight, and um, it just scared the scared living. Scared living daylights out of you. That was it, I think I shut down. And that's the emotion. Mm. That's the core emotion, the causal emotion you need to address. Okay. Does that make sense? That's the fear. That's yeah. the fear. So the reason why you're not interested is your fear kicks in as soon as you hear about it. Straight away you don't want to be interested and they now can utilise this fear. And what happened, I don't, know, you, I don't know if you can see yourself, you probably can't see yourself when you go into this state, but your eyes actually go completely white. You, you, your eyes turn up completely into... Yeah, I felt that. Yeah, and... <laughs> And that's the spirit trying to detune you completely and give you some sensations in a manner that will actually help you to stay away from the information. I thought that was actually the love of God entering me. Yeah, no, it's not. Yeah. How do I know the difference? Well, God wouldn't do a thing like that for a start. Right? God doesn't do things like that. So you know, many people feel they're having God experiences when in reality they're having spirit overcloaking experiences or out of body experiences. I know a man who's in so much physical pain that he spends much of his life in out of body and he believes that he's connected to God in that state. In reality, he's fully disconnected from his emotions. His emotions of his pain are all to do... The pain he's in is these, there's these physical sores on his body that are in so much pain because of his anger with his father that he doesn't want to deal with. He spends most of his time in out of body connected to spirits. And he believes it to be a God experience. It's actually an avoidance of experience of his own emotion. Does that make sense? 
this happens all the time what people believe to be experiences related to God are not experiences related to God but rather experiences related to spirits who want to disconnect you from yourself and keep you disconnected from God yeah and if we go to Gary next uh, next to Millie uh, AJ like is there different levels of influence like with the manic depressive person doing handstands to over cloaking to spiritual being influenced by spirits or you've got like I've got a bit of an attachment here like yeah. is there like different levels of um, uh, of spiritual influence yep. um, and is it like harder the deeper it, the attachment yes to Certainly. And obviously one of the deepest levels of attachment is when I believe I am the spirit. So you've heard of what are called walk-ins. You've heard that term walk-ins. What they are generally is a person on earth who is so detuned from their own life that they've now allowed a spirit to fully overcloak them and they themselves believe themselves to be that person. Right. So, so for example... Um, um, there's a man I know, um, I don't want to use too many specific examples here of people that are not in the audience, uh, um, so I, I don't like to do that because I want to help people who are in the audience. Um, but there, I'll just give you a gen some general examples. I know of a man who actually connects to a spirit who is in the first sphere of the spirit world, who is actually in a very, very angry place, but he loves nature. And so he can actually hear what the problem is from any piece of natural things. Animals as well as trees and flowers and birds and everything. He can hear, right, the problem that that particular thing is experiencing. And he believes that is because of this special and unique capability he has. He's actually allowed a spirit to completely overcloak him and he's become that person almost. And the spirit just tells him everything about what's going on in nature. But the spirit is quite angry. And when that anger gets challenged, he can get into an instant rage. So what would be like possession then? Like well, um, there are various degrees of it again. Um, in terms of possession, a person who is often in a psychiatric institution is often possessed completely by a spirit. In other words, they've opened themselves up through their free will and through their soul condition to a complete connection with a spirit and that spirit can now do whatever they want with them. And often the spirit's in a very, very dark and sad, lonely and terrified condition. And so the person now, because of this overcloaking, will be in the same state. And the spirit can't even look after themselves. And the reason, in the spirit world, you don't need to eat, of course. So this is why many of them no longer eat and they have to be intravenously fed and so forth because the spirit doesn't think it needs to eat. So they overcloaking a person. Now the person doesn't think they need to eat either. And they don't. And they have to, at some point, be medicated and, and intravenously fed. So that's a person who's really fully overcloaked by a spirit. However, the majority of mankind is not fully overcloaked by spirit. We have partial attachments to spirits. And many of these attachments begin while, soon after our birth, and some even begin while we're inside of our parents' our mother's womb. And, uh, and this is why a lot of children now are born with congenital defects that need to be repaired by doctors because actually many of them are created by some spirit attachment that actually occurred in the womb that the mother's soul condition didn't prevent. Right? And so uh, I've seen ones who are born with, for instance, leukaemia. And they actually have a spirit attached to them. And if you can get the spirit to remove from the attachment, the person instantly starts recovering and, uh, and is released. Now, there's some. if you want to read a natural love book about the subject, um, there's a lady, uh, Hands of Light, it's called. Some of you may have already read it. Um, her explanation of it is reincarnation 
right? But it's not actually to do with that, it's to do with spirit attachments. And, uh, and so she actually goes through uh, with children trying to remove spirit attachments. Now with things like kinesiology and muscle testing, you can test for a spirit attachment to a child or even to a baby, and then you can work through the emotions with the parent, because remember it's the parent's law of attraction, it's the parent's soul condition. You can work through the emotions with the parents that cause the attraction, and you can also talk to the spirit. I had another experience uh, overseas where a lady was a healer. I think I've told you about this before, but I want to say it again. A lady was a healer, and her husband and her, fa her husband's father and her husband's grandfather all died from diabetes. <coughs> and what happened was that uh, there was a spirit attached to each of the generations who then, as soon as the person died, just attached to the next generation of, of so the son because he had almost the same emotional injury as the father. You follow me? So he attached to the grandfather who eventually he died at a young age from diabetes and then he attached to the father who died at a young age of diabetes and then this woman's husband was dying from diabetes because he could no longer be medicated. There was no medication would work for him anymore and he was dying from it. So she did a healing on him and cured him of the diabetes instantly. After that time, he had no diabetes at all and he didn't have to have insulin or nothing. Nothing was the problem after that. But she had diabetes. And she, when I met her, was dying from diabetes. And what it was, was a spirit who was attached to the multi-generations down to the sun. And then because she came along as a healer and healed her husband, the spirit became angry with her and connected to her and caused exactly the same problem in her that he's been causing in the generations of men. All right. Um, you want to ask a question, Nina? A microphone? Where's one of the mics? Yep, good day. Here, here it comes. What role does medication play? Because there's a lot of um, stuff that I've been reading about antidepressants that they up the dosage on a person and then they start acting out their nightmares and say the Columbine massacre yep. was traced back to that. So how does medication interplay with spirit connection? Medication can only ever address a part of the effect of what's going on. So, for example, with a person who's, say, on a manic depressive, when they go on to medication, what happens is that there's a certain part of the brain that actually has the mediumship connection occurring through it. And as soon as you go on to medication, what happens is there's a disconnection of that part. So what that does is it detunes you from, generally, from the spirit more than what you were before. So the spirit can't now do a full connection to you. But it doesn't address the cause as to why the spirit's connected to you. And the cause is always emotional. And the problem with a lot of these medications is that not only do they not address the cause, but they also suppress the cause. All right? so, so they suppress the emotional condition that creates the attraction. So, so this is something that needs to be addressed by the medical community uh, in the long term. From some of the reading I've done, it seems that people are more susceptible after they're going on to antidepressants, to, to spirits? Particularly if they come off the antidepressants. But sometimes they can be more susceptible. It depends what kind of medication they're taking. If they take sort of detunement type drugs, which are the antidepressant group of drugs generally are, there's usually two or three categories of those. I think, I can't remember them all now, but I investigated them all at one point, tricyclics, there's uh, all these uh, Mayo inhibitors and so forth, right? Now, all of these different types of medication have, a different, have an action on a different part of the brain. And they will affect how the person connects with their mediumship connection. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, some of those different parts will connect it more and others will actually suppress it. So there will be different results depending on what type of drug the person takes. If a person then takes some kind of uh, hallucinogenic drug, like some kind of drug that you would use in a Recreation. recreationally, or you take some kind of drug that, like Valium or some kind of drug that has a huge effect on other parts of your, of your system, 
then all sorts of issues can then raise. And many of the spirits actually feed off the drug. So some spirits actually want to the person to have the drug, so for in the case of Valium, so that they themselves can actually have the same feeling. It's very much the same as an alcoholic connection. See, there's many spirits in the spirit world who are still alcoholics. They pass from the earth in an alcoholic state, right? And they want a connection. They want to feel the feeling of alcoholism. They want to feel the feeling of having the alcohol pass through them. Does that make sense? And once the, what they do then is they actually go and get drunk. And when they get drunk, the spirit connects to the person and just causes them to stay upright and keep drinking. And most of the time, they don't have any knowledge whatsoever of what's going on. Complete blackouts. And many of you in the audience have probably, when you've drank at some time, might have had a time where you've completely blacked out, right? But you're still upright, somehow. You've still got home, somehow. <laughs> Nobody helped you. What happened? But it's because the spirit was there just guiding that entire process, right? And it's exactly the same type of connection or someone who's on drugs or on, you know, on sometimes of these medicative drugs that uh, are, su are supplied by the medical profession. So it, it doesn't really matter what type of connection. The key is to look at the underlying causal emotion in the soul that creates the connection. Does that make sense? So can we go to Libby and then down to Pete? Hi, Jane. Um, before, when you're talking about zone outs, this is my first time here and I'm getting a bit scared. Yeah. I had on my head all this tingling. Yep. What was that? And it depends on what kind, where it's coming from uh, as to what it would be. It, it was coming from the side of your head? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times if it's on the side, it will be a spirit attempting to communicate with you. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean they're a, 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 a malevolent spirit. But they may, you just listening to this information causes certain changes in your soul. Right? So just even the contemplation of mediumship causes changes inside of your soul. I kind of got here forgetting to get with the mediumship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Session. yeah. And the contemplation of it causes certain things to change inside of your soul just, just by being here. And then that straight away means that a spirit can start influencing you. Now, it could be a good spirit. It could be a, a spirit who's malevolent. You don't know until you've address the feelings that are coming from them. So the things you need to do is allow yourself to feel what's coming at you. Now you, again, are quite frightened about this from your childhood. So it's a feeling that you'll need to address if you want to develop it. You are very mediumistic. Yeah. But you need to just address the, the issue from your childhood that actually blocks this. But these spirits would... I, I feel it's actually a quite a pleasant spirit who is with you, trying to uh, encourage you to develop this gift that you have. I've just got something in my mind who it was. Is that relevant to even us? Sure, yeah. Auntie Anne? Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. yeah. The reason why she wants... She's not in a really fantastic condition, but she's not in a really bad condition either, but she's got things she wants to say to the rest of the family and so forth, and... And she's connected with you because she has a uh, rapport with you. She feels there are certain emotions that you have that she had and has. And so she feels quite strongly connected with you. And she's now influencing you a lot more now. Can you feel that? Like, that you're tearing up now. And what, what, can you feel what that's about? It's still quite wrong. Yeah, okay. So... And connection and not being alone. Yep. Is the mic on? Sorry, <laughs> I don't think it is. So it's to do with your mum, connection, yeah. and not being alone. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I don't know. I'm yeah. The key scared. is to go with this now. Don't be frightened. The key is just to go with the emotion. There's some causal emotion underneath this. Does that make sense? The key for you is just allow it to to be triggered. Yeah. Don't, the key. See, often we don't need to be frightened of spirits connecting with us. We don't need to be frightened. There's a law of attraction happening. When the law of attraction happens, it's a beautiful thing because it helps us address certain things in our soul. There's certain things your mum, your auntie feels that she knows you feel and she's connecting with you about it. You can either allow the connection or disallow it. It's up to you, right? Just by turning off the emotion. 
my suggestion is let the emotion flow because it will help you address one of your causal emotions. Yeah. Thank you. No worries. And Peter was next. AJ, AJ you're talking about addictions to uh, alcohol and medications. Does, does the same thing uh, apply for like addictions to sugar or addictions to caffeine or things like that? Or is that like, a, are they lesser and there wouldn't be any spirit attachment uh, in those areas? <laughs> There are lesser spirit attachments for different substances because the substances have lesser effects on the spirit than they do on you physiologically in your body. So, so there are some substances that have a very heightened effect on you. For instance, alcohol is one of those, right? There are other substances that still have an effect on you, like sugar, but they have a different type of effect upon you. And, and different type of emotion is created by that effect. But there are certainly spirit attachments that can be affected by any one of these types of addictions. The key is always to address the emotion. Right? So you don't have to worry about the connection from the spirit. What you need to do is concern yourself with the underlying emotion inside of yourself that causes this connection to occur, because that's addressing the cause. Does that mean? No, because I've noticed that some people who are, are totally addicted to caffeine um, if they go off it, they... Um, they go into the DTs and, and... And they get really angry and lots of emotions come up yep. um, that they weren't aware of when they're having it on a regular basis. And that, that's primarily, though, because they are using the caffeine to suppress the anger-based emotions. And when, the ang when they no longer can use the caffeine, the anger-based emotions come up. And then, yes, while the anger-based emotions are there, the spirits now can have a heighten contact with the person if they are also in anger as well. So, so all of these different things can occur quite easily. But it all begins with the person's own suppression. Does that make sense? So if the person gets to what, remember anger is always the denial of an underlying causal emotion. So if a person's getting angry after they've got off of like something like caffeine, then they need to look at what's underneath this. There's a, there's a feeling underneath this, a sadness or some other feeling of shame or something that, that they do not want to feel from their childhood and that's what's causing them to be in a rage. Now, certainly a spirit can connect to them in that state while they're in a rage. In fact, the majority of people who get into a rage have a spirit connected with them. There, there's been times when I've been like, I go into a... Um, uh, drive into a drive, you know, to pick up some fuel, uh, into a roadhouse to pick up some fuel, and the person in front of me looks at me and then does everything they can to make it as slow as possible. <laughs> Have you ever had that happen? Yeah. Now, what does being, they're being guided by generally is a spirit who just wants to annoy other people. <laughs> right? And often I just talk to the spirit. And it's interesting what's happened when I've talked to the spirit because often when I've talked to the spirit, the person hurries up again and jumps in the car and goes or something like that. There was one though that just, he just sat there and he just, he just dragged the whole thing out and it was quite, am I found it quite amusing. And, uh, and the spirit just got angrier and angrier with me, right? I could, because I was becoming more and more amused by the whole interaction. And, and in the end, the spirit was so angry that he couldn't stop the man from going because the man wanted to go. <laughs> right? So the man had delayed things for 15, 20 minutes by this stage. And he just wanted to go, right? So, but the spirit was still saying, no, no, stop here, stop here. I want this to happen longer. But the man finished up. I could feel the, the, you could feel the war going on, if you like, between the man's will and the spirit's will. And eventually the man's will won and he just drove off. <laughs> and can we have the mic back? Behind you. Hello. Um, AJ, I'm seeing a lot of spirits yep. at the moment. Yep. And um, they're in full figure. Yep. And then I see glows and I see rips in them as well. Yep. Um, I see very dark spirits with a white glow around them. Yeah. And I don't know where I'm at with it. Okay. <laughs> where are they coming from and uh, what what They're all spirits they in? in different conditions, obviously, firstly. The ones that you see that have got rips in their bodies, they have certain emotions within their body, most probably that they want some assistance from you to help to deal with. Now, the way that you can give them assistance is through understanding where their feelings. So the key, when I interact with the spirit, I always interact at the feeling level. What is this spirit feeling? What does this spirit feel? 
Is he feeling? If she, is he or she feeling bad or sad? Is they feel? Are they feeling angry? Are they feeling resentful? What What is the feeling coming from? And this is going to be our next lesson. Our next lesson is learning to determine the feeling coming from the spirit, rather than just having an intellectual conversation with these spirits. Because remember. Just like here on earth, when we have an intellectual conversation with another person, we're not really connecting with them, are we? It's just a chat and then off you go sort of thing. The time when you really connect with a person on earth is when you have a heart-to-heart, -heart, isn't it? What we call a deep and meaningful, <laughs> right? And when we have a deep and meaningful conversation with somebody on earth, a friendship or a rapport is built up around that, isn't it? Can you see that? That's what happens, is friendship and rapport is built up. And the beauty of a friendship and rapport is that now we can interrelate to each other on an emotional and a deeper, deeper, much deeper level. Now my suggestion is to interrelate with spirits in the same way. Right? On this deep emotional level. What's going on for me emotionally? What's going on for the spirit emotionally? Why is this spirit attracted to me emotionally? Now in your case, there's a group of spirits in different categories attracted to you. Because you still have some fear to work through about your spirit connection and what you're seeing, there's a group of spirits who are attracted to you who just want to scare you silly. Because I can see their faces as well. Yep. And, you know, the eyes just look straight down at me. And, and they're looking really like through, yeah, like, they're feel like hollow. they're looking through you. They're and, hollow. And yeah. whenever I go to bed, like, and I, I'm closed, I've got... You and know, you're sort of almost haunted by the Yeah, whole and they come to me. They, like, they show their faces and... Yep. Yeah. yeah. Now those spirits, are, some of those spirits are trying just to scare you, right? And it's working. <laughs> so you need to allow yourself to get into the emotion of why you're so afraid and actually start to really deal with that emotion at the causal level. So it's related to childhood again, related to interaction with spirits that happened at your in your childhood. There's a second group of spirits that come to you where you see their eyes generally. Right? Or you see their shape, but you see fissures across them, their body. You see problems in different regions of their body. Those spirits are coming to you because they want your assistance. Right? They have problems that they can recognise now within their body, but they don't know how to deal with them. They don't know how to connect with them, and they don't know how to release them. They don't understand the principles of emotional release, but they can just see that you could help them, and they know that you can hear them, and they know you can see them. And so they know that you could help them if you wanted to. Yeah. But because you're afraid, you often don't help them. Yeah, I feel really cloaked when, when, I, yeah, when they're around. Mm -hmm. Like I just feel like I'm, I'm just so heavy with them. Yes. Yeah. And this is a re the reason why you're so heavy with them is they are attracted to you for two reasons. One is that you're mediumistic and they know that you might be able to assist them and hear them. The second thing is there's some emotions you have within yourself that are similar to their emotions. And this is why you feel heavy with their surrounding you. When you feel that heavy emotion, start connecting with them about what the emotion's about. Is it sadness? Is it grief? Is it despair? What is the emotion? Allow yourself to feel your own emotion, but also talk to them about feeling their despair rather than projecting it at you. Because what they're doing is projecting their despair at you, which triggers your own despair and connects with your own despair, which causes you to feel heavy, but you're feeling heavy because you're not releasing your own despair. Does that make sense? When you release your own despair, these, he these heavy spirits can come to you, but you will not feel heavy. Because there's no resonant emotion inside of yourself for them to connect with. And you'll be in a greater condition to be able to help them. But bear in mind, you could actually help them now. If you demonstrated to, you just say, look, oh, you're feeling despair. Is that what you're feeling? You'll feel confirmations and everything, and they'll often speak with you, right? And, and say, oh, I feel despair too, obviously. And allow yourself to feel it. This is, say to them, this is how you feel your despair. And show them. And then show, tell them, notice all of the, the, these colours flying off my spirit body now. Can you see all of that? Well, that means that I'm releasing the emotion of despair from me. That's what you need to do. You need to do the same thing. Release this emotion of despair off of you and then you won't feel this despair anymore. And what is it that you want to cry about? And they might say, oh, well, it was something to do with my childhood or it was something to do with me being abused or raped or harmed in some way. And you could talk to them about that and allow them to work through that emotion with you. Right? 
And then the third group of spirits with you um, are some brighter spirits who are, who are trying to help you develop your mediumship in such a way to help these first two groups. Do you follow me? Are they like the brighter ones that I see? Yeah, and you often don't see them in a form because they don't display themselves are they to you. like just like a shimmer glow? Yeah, a lot yeah. of times there's a, yeah. as a, as a glowing, glowing light. You will come to see them. But it means, firstly, to actually deal with some emotions within you before you'll be able to do that. But they are surrounding you, wanting to help you develop this process of mediumship to help these other groups of spirits. Many of you here, by the way, you're going to find that you're going to help far more spirits than you are people on Earth. Right? There are literally billions and billions and billions of spirits who need assistance. Right? And there's more spirits in the first sphere of the spirit world than there are people on earth. And it's much easier to help a spirit who wants to be assisted than it is to help a person on earth who wants to be assisted. Right? Particularly if you can demonstrate to them through your own release of emotion what to do. Because they can be greatly assisted by that process. So, so that's what we'll be talking about doing in the next the exercise I'm going to present after the break. Yep. Oh, can I just, when I see the full body, yep. is that uh, still the third, lot of, like what, what, what ha what's happening when I see like, like I see the glows and then I see like the full figure, yep. is that like just, what's... You're, eventually you'll finish up seeing these spirits as solid people. All of them? All of them. Okay. All right. And I've, talk, I've, talk, I've talked to some people who do, can see that already as a natural gift, like they don't have any blockages or fears that you currently have to do that. And so, so one lady I know, she's driving down the road in her car. She doesn't drive anymore because she keeps running over spirits <laughs> and she freaks out because she thinks they're people, real people. That's how clear her sight is, right? And so, and so she's driving down the road and, and, and she sees people walking along with the prams and do you see that person? She talks to the person next to her. No, I don't, <laughs> I don't see that person. And she can see them as if they're a person, like, doing that. And eventually, all of you who develop your mediumship will be able to do that. There's, a, there's an example in the Robert James Lee's books where, in the foreword of the Robert James Lee's books that I suggest you read, um, in, in, I think it's in Through the Mist, but it might be in one of the others. Um, it actually describes the process that he went through developing his mediumship, not understanding the, the, the methods. He had some spirits teaching him how to develop his mediumship. And eventually these spirits would come and sit in his lounge room and talk with him on lounge chairs. That he and he would transcribe the conversations. Right? So that's how clear your mediumship can become if you're not afraid of that occurring. Yeah. Um, Jen and then Louise. Um, there's a part of my childhood experience where I went into terror and I don't remember coming out of the little room and getting back to my parents and it's just occurred to me and my question is, is it, is it possible at that point to, in, in a three, I'm three years old, mm -hmm. to become possessed, to become so influenced by outside forces because I simply cannot, I've tried to remember. Yeah, what I've actually happened to you, Jen, was something different. Was it? Um, oh, good. I would want to describe something that happens to many abuse victims. A lot of times when a person is being abused or raped or harmed, particularly when they're children, their spirit guides will actually take them out of body. All right? Now, the spirit guides do this in an effort to protect them from harm at a spiritual and emotional level. You follow me? And so many people who have experienced childhood abuse will find there will be gaps in their memory of the physical events. And the reasons why this occurs is the spirit guide will actually lift the person out of their body and it's the body that experiences a lot of the events but there is not a conscious recollection, right, of, uh, or a conscious memory of what happened in between the start of the event and the end of the event. This is what happened to you. You understand? Now, what we need to do, they take you to a safe place. Uh, in, usually it's in the first sphere, but in the, in the uh, what's, you know, around Summerland. Usually that's the condition. And there's this safe place, and you will actually probably have a picture of that place at some point in the future, or if you haven't had already. Right? And 
they take you to that place and they nurture you there and help you move your body and everything out of the location if that's possible, right? That's what they do. Now, it doesn't mean that you're not going to be able to have to deal with something emotionally about that. But what you need to do is allow the emotion of the abuse to still be experienced and then God can help you by, through her love to release that completely. Now, a lot of people who have had childhood abuse experiences um, often then choose out-of-body experiences as a way of coping with things. And uh, because they were shown usually at a very young age how to have out-of-body experiences, they then start having out-of-body experiences throughout their life whenever their life gets too hard. All right? And so my suggestion is to go back into your body in those local times and look at the emotion that causes you to go out of body. There's an emotion in that. And, uh, and the emotion is to try and get... A, the, the, the desire is to try and get away from that emotion. But if you release that emotion, you won't need to get away from it anymore. So th that's something that's essential to do on the divine love path. Does that make sense, Jen, for yourself, Louise? Um, yeah, AJ, just... Um, yeah, I've had a physical condition for a few years, chronic fatigue, and uh -huh. I was told by a lady in this group that um, I had spirit attachment around that. And yep. I was wondering what emotion I need to release and why the spirits are attaching me. You need to release the emotion of why you want to please others so much. Does that make sense? And, and why are they attaching to... What are they getting from me, um, you know, me feeling so tired and exhausted? They feel tired and exhausted and all the same feelings you yeah. feel about pleasing others too much. Oh, they feel yeah. exactly the same emotions. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Yeah. And so they feel very attached to you. They feel that you do give too much, give too much to other people, don't do enough for yourself, which is exactly their feelings as well. Mm -hmm. They have exactly those feelings. They passed with those feelings. They did... Uh, uh, you've got three of them, I feel, and two of them have had exhausting lives while they were on Earth. Mm -hmm. Like, absolutely exhausting. All of their life was just giving, 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 and they've passed and they feel like they've got nothing left. So are they making me sick or I'm making myself sick? You're making yourself sick, sick. Yeah. but their attachment is making it worse. Yeah, it, it feels like I've got this burden as sense? well as my own but physical... But the beauty of the attachment, remember all attachments have, a, have love as a part of them, and the beauty of this attachment is that it's helping you look at why am I, have I got chronic fatigue? Yeah. Why have I got it? And the answer is because you want to plead... Anybody, by the way, anyone with chronic fatigue, you want to please other people so much, you're sacrificing yourself. Right? And there's an emotional reason, there's an addiction you have as to what, what you get out of that that you need to address. Worthlessness. Sorry? It feels like a worthlessness. Yeah, what, when you're helping others, you yeah. feel... Better. Better. Yeah. Right? But what's happening is you're helping others so much mm. that you're depleted emotionally, spiritually and physically Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the underlying causal emotion is the underlying worth, uh, worthlessness you feel when you don't help anybody, when you don't do what yeah. they want. Does that and make sense? And it's funny, I've got this, because I'm a counsellor, I've got this real desire to just give it up for about six months. And, yep, I'd um, go with that desire myself if I were Really you. strong, yeah. yeah. Because, it, because what you need to do is start concentrating on wh what's the underlying emotional reason why I'm a counsellor. Mm -hmm. Is it to help people? And this is a trouble with many helping type uh, professions. Often t there are two emotions driving us. One emotion is a pure emotion of mm -hmm. wanting to give help and love to other people. That's the pure emotion. The other emotion is often this emotion of I feel totally worthless mm -hmm. if I don't help somebody. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That I need to address inside of yeah. myself. And often we need to sort of, it's like any addiction. You take away the addiction, like if it was smoking, you take away the smoke and see what comes up. With any addiction, you can take away the addiction and see what emotion is triggered. And my suggestion is go with that. Now what will happen is when you do that, you will start loving yourself, but you'll also be teaching the spirits who are with you how to love themselves. Yeah. Does that make so sense? So that strong feeling to give it up for about six months is... is a kind of help, going to help me. Is a, yeah, is a desire of yours in order to address yeah. the emotional yeah. reason of why you want to assist other people in yeah. the way that you do. Because in the, in the end, you don't want to assist other people to your own detriment. Yeah. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank Good you. Night. Up the back there, thanks. If you keep your hand up there.
I'm going to stand. That's all right. That's all right. Yep. This is no offence to you, but ever since you spoke, I have I just feel like I want to run away. Yeah. My heart is out of here. I'm shaking. Yeah. Now I've been to church for years. Mm -hmm. um, I've had a lot of experiences, angel-wise. Yeah. I'm not a medium at all, but I've had readings. Yeah. I was taught my whole life that it was wrong. Yeah. All of this stuff that you're saying. Yeah. So I'm not sitting here judging anybody or anything. I'm yep. open-minded. Yeah. But I want to know what what's going why on. Why am I feeling like I just want to run? Yeah. Yep. And and it come from you. I don't know why. You have it's a about zoning out because I was fully, I was getting bored. No offense. Thinking, oh, this doesn't mean anything <laughs> to me because yeah, I'm yeah, not a yeah. psychic or a medium or anything. Yeah. I know I have something. You are quite mediumistic, actually. So what this is? In, in, yeah. What's happening oh, for you at the moment? moment is you have a spirit with you. The spirit with you is a, is a Christian spirit who used to live on earth and she's very, very frightened of talking about anything to do with mediumship because mm. she learnt when she was on the earth that it was to do with the devil. Yes, yeah. Does That's that make sense? Why, yeah. Right? That's now, now, what's happening is because of that fear that's in her and that fear, by the way, is also in yourself that it's possible that it might be from the devil and because of this fear, she's now making, because there's, there's a resonant fear, there's a feeling of fear inside of yourself that she is now, she's feeling a fear as well. And the two of you get together and your fear is going to be heightened. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And all you want to both do it's run. is run. Now, the reason why it was triggered by, what was your name again, sorry? Alex. Sorry, by, Alex. No, by Alex. Was because there was something that happened to Alex when he, when he went into this out-of-body state, his eyes all rolled up. And this very much frightened the lady spirit with you. That's what she views as possession. Mm. Does that make sense? Yes. And so she got very, very frightened with what she saw Alex do and then became very, very scared inside of herself. Oh, I shouldn't be here, I shouldn't be here, I shouldn't be here. One thing I'd like to remind her, though, is that she actually has a spirit guide in the spirit world as well. And this spirit guide in the spirit world actually wanted her to come along with you, right? So to learn about some of the divine truths that the spirit guide that she has knows about. And this is part of this process. So, she, so if she actually listens to that spirit, the higher spirit who's coming to her that she's afraid of, she would actually benefit greatly from, from actually assisting you in your own progression as well. So I'll feel better if she does that. Yeah. And now, how are you feeling how? now? Oh, a lot calmer. Okay. Because she's... I just had a smoke, though. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. You... I see emotions. Yeah. But you, you noticed before when you started speaking, you yeah. were, like, physically shaking. And my, my heart, I f like, full-on heart palpitations, like... Horrible. Yeah. Hurt. Now, now you can feel straight away that one thing I want to say to this lady is that the bright spirit that she's scared of is the person that can help her the most. Right? Okay. She's been afraid of this bright spirit for such a long time, and yet it's going to be the person that can help her the most. And something, if she bears in mind, in the Bible, she remembers that I said to let your light shine to the world. And the people who have the brightest lights are in the better conditions. Now, this is applies in the spirit world as well. Can she, she can remember this, right? That she remembers that statement from the Bible. And it applies to the spirit world as well. That the people who are in the brighter conditions are actually the people that can help you more. And that's what she needs to bear in mind. Is she always with me? She's been with you most of the time you've been going to Christian churches. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't go anymore. Yeah. Haven't been That's where, where she connected with you. Cool. All right. How are you feeling now? Oh, heaps better. Okay. That's because she's heaps. feeling heaps better. Okay. Does that make sense? So how... It's one more thing, sorry. Yeah. I could talk for hours, by the way. No, that's, that's all right. Yeah. Ask. <laughs> um, uh, um, now I've lost it. Um, how do I, as just a mere human being, because of my teachings in, t in church, yep. um, this is all just freaky for me because I've always been told it's bad and, yeah, yep. and all that stuff. How do I open myself up to, ta to take th this sort of stuff in and not go, oh crap? 
this is not what I've been taught. You know, that's how I'm feeling. <laughs> Although very... I believe that you say who you are, I know you are. But it's just weird that I just feel, yeah, torn, if you want to say. Well, if you, if you remember from your Christian upbringing, remember that when I was in the first century, there were many times that I expelled what they called demons out of people. You remember that? And mm -hmm. um, they were just people who were spirits who were in a very dark condition that could be removed from the person on earth. That's what was happening. And what we're explaining in these groups is just how to do these kind of things in terms of, in terms of talking to spirits and helping them actually remove from people on earth, and which will actually raise the condition of people on earth. It'll actually make the condition better. Your teachings are very much based around, and many religious teachings as well, very much based around there being a devil, right? Or Satan, a belief that there's a devil. And the spirit who's with you actually thinks that she might have seen the devil, right? And it's not that she's seen the devil. What's happened is that she's seen some spirits who are in worse condition than herself. And the worse condition that you get into, the worse you look. Right? And you become more and more evil in your look as well, depending on your condition. Now, my suggestion is for the both of you, the spirit who's with you and yourself, to watch the introductory presentation, if you haven't already do done so. Now, I'm giving a, n a brand new introductory presentation in, uh, I think it's four weeks on the Gold Coast. Uh, September the 26th? Uh, Saturday, September the 26th on the Gold Coast. Um, and if you give, send an email address to office at, it's just office, like I've got over there, at divine truth, truth.com, what we can do is just send you the details about it. And that introductory session will explain how the whole spirit world works. Now when you start, and the spirits with you start understanding how the spirit world works, then they can start understanding how progression occurs. And my suggestion is to learn as much as you can about that before you dismiss it. All right? And I'm suggesting to the spirit with you to do the same. She will be greatly assisted by... Uh, she'll, she'll, be, um, she'll feel so totally different if she does that that she'll be amazed. Um, so it will help her a lot. So you're feeling calmer now? Good day. That's good. <laughs> um, Back to Alex, so that Alex can have a rebuttal. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no, I've just gone really cold and clammy on freezing and shaking. Yeah. And so, uh, the you, spirit with you is really knocking you about. Can right? you tell me who that is or what's going on? Yeah. And the spirit with you is just cycling between a fear of letting you go and fear of what all this will mean in his life and fear of what it's all going to mean for the connection between the two of you. And there's just so much going on for that spirit. So, um, and as a result, there's going to be so much going on for you as well, right? My suggestion is to deal with the emotion underneath it, which is actually the fear surrounding the three-year-old event when you were three years old. That's the underlying causal emotion that, is, that you need to allow yourself to address. And the, tr the trouble with fear and terror is terror needs to ex be experienced bodily to be released. And uh, so it's not something you're going to be able to just go into your mind or go into yoga or something like that to release. You're going to have to go into the actual terror itself as you were three years of age to release it. Because everything that passes, what happens with your soul, and by the way, I want to say to that spirit, there is no devil. There is no Satan. Huh? No, there's no devil that exists in the spirit world. When you, uh, when you go into the soul, remember that your soul is like a container that has emotions flow through it. Right? And terror is one of these emotions that needs to throw, flow through you. What happened when you were little is it got blocked. So it got stored in your soul. This terror is like a ball of energy that's not in motion. Remember, emotion is energy in motion. And this terror is this block in the soul, which is the energy not in motion. It's stuck inside of your soul. And because it's stuck inside of your soul at the age that it occurs, it needs to be released. And the way it's going to be released is that you will feel 
the terror at the age it was created, which will be three years of age. So what you do is you pray to God about assisting you to stay in the state of terror at that age for as long as possible. Now, in my case, I've had a lot of terror to deal with, so I had to revisit it over and over and over again. And I've still got some terror to work my way through, which I'm revisiting. So terror is not the kind of emotion you can usually do in one, in one sitting. It's the kind of emotion that you need to allow yourself to feel on a number of different occasions. Can I put myself in a situation that's quite uh, that will bring on this fear? That will sorry. That that will make me scared. That will bring on this fear. You can, but the problem with putting yourself in a situation that makes you afraid is that it's highly unlikely you'll actually allow the fear and terror to be present. So it would be better if you could actually sort of lay yourself down and actually remember the event, and that will place you in the emotion. And you can do that with your imagination. However, you can choose the alternative method and put yourself in a situation that makes you afraid as long as you understand that actually it's not going to happen. Like, because a lot of times, if we, we've got to be careful with terror and that we don't want to reinfect ourselves with more terror right, as we're doing it. So you, know, you don't want to place yourself in a terrifying situation just to deal with your earlier terror and that terrifying situation has its own, cause, has its own causes and effects on you. My suggestion is to use your imagination and prayer as much as possible. In the spirit world, that's what most of the spirits do. They use their, they've used their imagination and put themselves back into the event. And when I say their imagination, it might not even be the accurate event. You can use your imagination a lot of time to pull yourself back into what you think the event was and just allow the emotions to start covering up. And if you're open emotionally, the emotions will flow out of you. Does that make sense? Yeah? <laughs> We go down here with the mic. Thanks, Graham. For thank you for all of the people who do the microphones. I know it's like far away. Okay, um, I've, I've gone into some of that terror, and uh, well, it's really terrifying. Yeah. And um, I didn't feel what it was or anything. Yeah. But now, when I'm, I know it's, there's still more, and um, but now when I try to go there. I, my body goes out of control, I'm, I'm moaning and all this sort of stuff, but I'm not actually feeling the terror and I just wonder where I'm at with that. You know, like, is it because I'm just too scared to go back in there or what? Yeah, what's happening for yourself, and this doesn't apply to everyone of course, but every single person is different with the way in which they deal with terror. What often happens when we start to feel some terror Remember we talked about emotions of self-deception. One emotion of self-deception that we often have is a, a feeling of, um, what, we, what would you call commiseration with yourself? Um, self-pity. Self self-pity, self right? Yeah. So, so often with terror what happens is we, self-pity is sort of a layer that we use above the terror. So isn't it terrible that I've got this terrible terror, <laughs> right? And we then go into the tears of that rather than allowing ourselves to go into the terror. So it's a way sort of of, the, of avoiding the terror within us. And, and this is what's happening to you occasionally. a lot of self-pity. Does that make sense? Yeah. So allow, with any feeling, allow yourself to feel the self-pity and then ask yourself, is this an emotion where I want to be out of the terror or not? Is this preferable to the terror? Now, in most cases, what you'll find is it's preferable for you to experience the self-pity than it is for the terror, so you know that it's an emotion of self-deception. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm. So allow yourself to say, well, I don't need to feel self-pity at all. I don't need to go through this emotion at all because it's just an emotion I'm creating to avoid the real emotion that I need to experience, mm. which is the terror itself. I'm not actually, I'm not actually feeling self-pity at that time, though, when I'm actually letting go and trying to get to the terror. Yeah, um, but there's a block. So, yeah, and, so, yeah. so, and this is something that maybe Mary wants to talk about a bit at a later stage, a whole set of emotions which we'll call blocking emotions. You see, most people um, forget that the reason why I'm not experiencing an emotion right now is because I've got a blockage emotion that's over the top of it. Do you follow me? So terror is the real emotion. What's the blockage emotion? In your case, it is fear of terror, right? 
Sorry about that, I'll write that better so everyone can see it. The fear of terror. The belief you have, or this, is, this is a belief. The belief you have is if you experience this terror, you will die. And I've also felt like it was like terrible spirit attacking me as well. Yep, yep. So you've got, so there's a few blockages. So there's a blocking emotion. And then the self-deception emotion is... Does that make sense? So the self-deception emotion doesn't have to be experienced, but the blockage emotion does. So you need to allow yourself to work out why you're so afraid of terror. Allow yourself to feel your fear of death allow yourself to feel some of those types of and the fear of spirits around you once you feel those and realize and pray to God about them like talk to God about why you feel those you'll find that all fears are because we believe things that are untrue when you get through that you will have these realizations wow you'll just you it won't be an intellectual realization it'll be an emotion that happens. It'll be a wow time like for you. You just go in this wow. I don't need to feel a fear of terror because I know I can get through it. You'll just have this, once you do it, deal with the blocking emotions, you'll just get to this point. Wow. Right? And then you know you've had the realisation that's released the untruth. And once you're in that state, you'll find the terror will probably naturally come up. And you'll feel confident about experiencing it, although it'll feel like the age that it was created. You will still feel confident that you'll be able to get through it. Does that make sense? Yep. Thanks. Um, I think a similar thing might happen for me. It's um, I get a dread, an absolute dread of something happening to someone else, but I, it doesn't. I don't seem to be able to relate it to me because it. There's a real feeling there that it might be. <laughs> you know it's related to you. Um, can I just say something about all feelings related to other people? All feelings related to other people have nothing to do with the other person. <laughs> <laughs> and what we need to do is learn to personalise everything when we're doing our emotional work. Right? And this applies to spirits who are here too, doing, dealing with their emotional work. They need to personalise everything. So. When I'm afraid of someone else, I'm actually afraid of something that that will create inside of me. When I'm, so if I'm afraid of someone's anger, for example, I'm really afraid of how I'm going to feel when they're angry with me. When I have a dread for someone else's life, there is actually a dread I have about something inside of myself about my own life that's occurred usually in my childhood. Does that make sense? So the key is to acknowledge that. The first avenue of experiencing any, any emotion is to say the truth to yourself. I am in dread. Not for them, for myself. That, that is the first state of truth. When you even say that, you can, I can feel in you, just me saying those words to you, all of a sudden you're now starting to, like the, the tears are almost there and you're starting, can you feel that? Just me even just saying the truth will have that opening effect to you and allow your body to shake, allow yourself to feel the trauma of that. You are in dread about something about what happened in your life and allow yourself to just have that come up in you. Yeah? And as that comes up, you just allow yourself to go with that emotion. Nothing can happen to you when you're feeling your emotions. It's only when you deny your emotions that bad things happen to you. Now, this is an important thing to remember. If I'm feeling my emotions and fully experiencing my emotions, my law of attraction is changing right at that moment. Right? If I stop feeling my emotion, I block my emotion, now my law of attraction is whatever I'm blocking, I will have pulled to me. You follow me to address that emotion. <coughs> You remember that every time we're dealing with an emotion, if I'm blocking the emotion, I'm actually creating things worse around me, not better. If I'm feeling the emotion, that's actually a better state. I'm actually in a better state of creation when I'm feeling the emotion. That's the thing we need to remember. So when you're feeling this terrified feeling, this dread feeling, 
and you're feeling teary up about it, let those things happen inside of yourself. Just allow it. And say the truth to yourself. I am in dread about something in my life. You don't even know to know what it is at this point. Just allow, although I do feel you know what it is. Um, allow yourself to just feel it. AJ, I was very ambivalent about coming today, mainly because I didn't feel I really belonged here. Um, I hadn't been to the other sessions, yeah. and uh, and I definitely don't want to be uh, a medium. Why not? <laughs> but go but on. Be, well, I, and I'm not sure now that <laughs> still, that was my initial fear. I, I think the initial thing was it's really quite spooky. Yes. To, to that. And this, as I feel, one of the reasons why you were drawn to today. Because yeah. today we are dealing with these issues of what's going on with our spirit into relationships and what's going on with fear, right? Remember, that, remember this is all a, really a revision of what I triggered a few months ago with the session, and that is dealing with your fears. In one, in, in, in my purpose was to deal with some of the fears that you have about me, <laughs> but, but also that you have, of fears that you have generally. Right, to actually start addressing the fears. And, and this is why it's such an important thing to, to do, is that fear is one of the worst things that affects every single person's life on earth. Yesterday I talked about world vision. The whole reason why the world hasn't got a real vision of what can be achieved is because the whole world is in a state of terror and fear about all sorts of things. And we need to address this on an individual level if the whole world is going to change. We need to address the fears on an individual level. How I feel, am I afraid, needs to be addressed. Yeah. So it's good for you to be here. Yeah. Well, I, I was falling asleep earlier. Mm -hmm. you know, I guess that's the zoning out you're talking about. Because yes. I was really fighting to stay awake. And now I'm finding that I'm, my eyes, I can hardly... Yeah, I can hardly exactly. <laughs> How many of you now feel really wide awake when you were feeling quite zoned out? Mm -hmm. Just me addressing the fact that there are spirits influencing you makes you conscious of the fact that those spirits are influencing you and stops those spirits from influencing you. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Just acknowledging the truth is so powerful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So that's yeah. the thing to remember. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, and for everyone here, you've got to remember your law of attraction is oper in operation. If your law of attraction is operation, it means that if you were drawn here, you were drawn here for a reason. And it will be related to something in the discussion. And that's the thing to remember. Yeah. And up the back, thank you. Behind Alex. <laughs> Hi AJ, um, I was told when I was about 22 that I was a walk-in yep. and it was from an, a fairly ascended being mm -hmm. um, and that my soul chose to leave the earth this time so that I could do light work, I don't mm -hmm. know, I don't know. So, and how do you feel about it now? Well. If it's true, I want my soul back. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, I don't want my soul to go walk I about. I want mine back, yeah. yeah. And, but it, it was, at the time, there, was, um, um, there were huge life changes. I, I, I got onto the natural love path at that very time, and my life radically changed. So it made sense, but I, I don't know if it's a truth or not. All right, let's look at what a walk-in is. Remember I described it as a person a spirit being who's overcloaking the person so much that the person, because the person does not want to be in their own life. Now you think back to when it happened and what emotions you were going through. I remember my house got broken into yep. and I was so terrified I, I, I left the house and I left the country. Okay. Yeah. Can you see? Mm. And that, what that does is it attracts a spirit to overcloak you, who makes you feel a bit more powerful and a bit more self-assured and a bit more confident and all those kind of things. And you are very mediumistic, and so this can happen quite easily. There's, there's no such thing as your soul exiting your body except when you pass. So your soul is still attached to your spirit body and your physical bodies. So what actually happens is this. Here's the half of your soul. Here's your spirit body. Sorry about the dress. And here's your material body. Uh, sorry about the uh, disproportion. And so spirit body, material body, soul. 
there is always a connection between these bodies while you are alive. So while you're alive in the physical realm, there is always a connection between your material body and your spirit body. Always. Right? But what happens when we choose to go out of body is this part of, or when we choose to disassociate from our own self, which is often caused by deep emotional fears, what happens in that stage is that part of us exits, if you like, but is maintained with a connection called a silver cord. Right? It's a connection that still is maintained. This connection is called a silver cord because it looks silver in colour to spirits who can see it. Right? And what happens is the silver cord is it's, it's an extensible cord. You can think of it like an extension cord that can go anywhere in the universe, if you like. Right? It's actually an energy band that, that is a physical energy.